this is the second time I'm uploading this video. The powers that be are trying everything possible to get rid of this video from the internet. They want to suppress the truth and they don't want you to see it. If you have watched this video, no worries, but keep sharing it. Keep sharing it because they have conspired again to make sure that this truth is not heard. Keep sharing this video. That is what I can tell you. <laughs>
and then joined the Nigerian Army in 1960. That is before independence. I, um, I joined the Nigerian Army when it was called Royal Nigerian Army, and um, I attended as a pioneer of uh, the Nigerian Military Training College, which was at Kaduna. I uh, attended it for six months, and from there, I was chosen as one of the five people sent to Sandhurst. So I went to Sandhurst with Akine Ade, if you remember Akine Ade, who is now a Lieutenant General, <laughs> Owakwe, who is already dead, Ihedibo, an ex CIC like myself, and a Romobo with me, these are the people who went to Sandhurst. Normally the best five were sent to Sandhurst and I, I was lucky to be among the best five. That's oh. it. So we went to Sandhurst and I want to be brief because I have a lot of things to say about myself, mm. both right and wrong. So I went to Sandhurst from there, I came back to Nigeria, no, I went to a place called Chatham okay. to do military, military engineering and it was for one year and uh, after that I came back to Nigeria and Nigerian army sent me to America. So I went to Fort Belvoir in Virginia to do career engineer, engineer officer career course. So that's what happened. I, uh, after that I came back to Nigeria in 1965, and lo and behold, things were not going well in the country. You, you know, remember the 1964 elections and all that? Mm -hmm. There were some uh, reverberations with regard to the goings on in the country yeah. that were, you know, not, not doing well for Nigeria. So I. Um, I got involved in the coup of January 66, for which I was detained by Iron Sin. I was detained in Lagos, Kirikiri, from Kirikiri to all sorts of prisons, including the Enugu prison. And by July 1966, I was at Abakaliki prison. I wasn't the only one. We were about 28 of us anyway. So. I was detained there, and then there was July coup. Unfortunately, the coup, second coup came in July, end of July. That is after we, the emergence of Gawan became a fait accompli. So, Irunsi was killed by Northerners who did the July counter coup. Uh, Ojuku, who was the governor of the East, decided that he would release us from prison. So I was released with Nzogo and other, other people who were not killed by the Northern talks when they struck in July 1966. Yeah. And that is because we were held in the East. Okay. And typical of, uh, well, coups, the coup, the counter coup, had no effect in Enugu. It had effect in Lagos, in uh, everywhere except Enugu. And so, and that was because some troops in 1st Battalion, which was at Enugu, heard about or had wind about the coup coming in, that the counter coup, and seized the armory. The armory is where they kept arms. They seized it. And so when Northerners came to take over the armory, they were arrested. And those Northerners, including Yaraduao, the Yaradua that uh, is dead now. Uh, a lot of them. And Ujuku was 
consulted because at that time he was uh, he was hiding in the police uh, police headquarters but eventually he was consulted and uh, he used those people arrested those northerners, northerners arrested as a bargaining chip to get our people who were in the north who were arrested in the north released mm. and brought home oh. the only thing is that when the northerners in the east were going home they were allowed to to ha go home with their personal weapons mm. whereas those of our people who were in the north who were not who were allowed to, to go, go yeah. were not allowed to go with their personal weapons in mm. any case and they were lucky they had their, their lives uh, with them so that's it uh, after that we were then the war came Gawan who said to the world there was no basis for unity fought a war of unity in fact brought war of unity to our doorstep you understand yeah brought the war here and that's why I don't have any regard for him because he, he said there was no basis for unity and in another breath he talked about unity he had reneged over the Aburi decision mm. that no war should be used in solving Nigerian problem today you can see what is happening in the in the political arena Gawani is not saying a word. When he has opportunity to talk, he says, I don't want anybody to do anything about unity that will affect our unity. Unity is for the living, not for the dead. Dead people don't talk about unity. And therefore, what is important is that he should be a man and speak up against a man who is ruling this country wrongly. Because he, he was the one who imposed a war of unity on Nigeria. Okay. And many people died. Mm. Unfortunately, Nigerians don't have statistics as to how many people died either this way or that yeah. way. That is Nigeria for you. And anybody, anybody who cares can say anything and do anything and get away with it. Okay. That is that is not so anyway. Apart from the one saying basis of unity, we fought a war. I fought a war, and for which I got this wound. Mm. I was I got this wound at Abo after the ninth mile corner, and it's a machine gun wound, mm. and it has its uh, debilitating effect right now. That's why I'm traveling to see what can be done. Not that I want to continue living though, because it doesn't bother me one way or the other. God's time is the best. Now, I, after the war, Gawan, the same Gawan said, uh, no victor, no vanquished. But the same Gawan set up a board of inquiry headed by uh, Adebayo. And the board of inquiry was to determine what we, ex-Nigerian army officers, did against Nigeria during the war. But he said, no victor, no vanquished. And today, how are they treating us? There is victor, there is vanquished. Mm. Everybody knows that. All right? All right. So he set up that board of inquiry, and they determined that we should be uh, re-arrested and detained. And that's what I covered in the fall of Biafra how they treated us. We went back to Kirikiri. First of all, Porakot Prison, where they were giving us, oh, I don't know, I don't know. It's not good. I don't want to rewrite a, a book. Mm. Let's just live, you know, sleeping dogs lie. So I went to detention, 1970, 71, 72, 73, 74. We were in prison, no trial. But thanks to uh, Dr. Tai Solari, Dr. Taishorari, you remember him? Yeah. He made a march from Ikene to Lagos, persuading Gawan to release us. There were people outside Nigeria who were bothered about our being continually, you know, being detained. detained. Mm. And even 
Some people went to the United Nations to talk about us. But Nigerian government, Gawan's Nigerian government, said, no, there were no detainees in Nigeria. No detainees. And so we, we spent about five years in prison without trial. And when they were there to release us, it was Hassan Usman Katsina who received us at the Lagos Garrison Organization. And he said to us, look, from now on you, are, you can go, uh, but don't enter any military barracks and all that. These are the people who say, no, Victor, no, Van Quito. And he released us, not even a cobalt to any of us for transport home from Lagos. But you see, no man is an island. This God we serve, he knows everything. He sees everything. And I thank him. Because I'm here today talking about what experiences I have. There are people who haven't had that kind of experience. Yes, yes. So I thank God. So after that, I came out, starting life afresh, afresh <laughs> I don't want to go into that anymore because it's it's an old story so that is where it ended All right. and so I started writing books I am not very good at writing books because if I were good I would have written more than uh, three actually I have another book titled uh, figments and nothing okay. but it doesn't matter so all right, all right, all right, sir. Thank you so much. Um, you are giving us an overview, a yes. summary of a very wonderful life, full of experience. And uh, we thank God for your life that you are still here with us to share your experience thank with you. us. Now, now let's go down to the coup, because from the coup or from the political instability in the West, which led to the coup, then from the coup to the genocide war, yes, then to the current Nigerian system, what we are experiencing now. Now, you talked about the coup or being co-opted into the coup. Yes. What led to the coup and all that? Give us um, an insider and personal experience of you being part of that coup and why it is called Ibo coup. And you wrote a book called Five measures yeah, Nigeria's five measures. Nigeria's five measures thank you very much the thing is I don't want to repeat what I have already said in my book but the point is the coup came as a result of our taking exception to what was happening in Nigeria people making nonsense do you there's, there's a former governor of the of the north who wrote lately that Nigeria is ripe for a coup. Did you read it? Yeah, I think I saw it. What's up? Oh, yes. He said Nigeria is ripe for a coup. When people come and start messing up other people's lives, because some people are not uh, serious about leadership. They are not serious. They are not serious about Boko Haram. They are not serious. And they, they, they don't even want, even want to involve you. They are device team. they are pushing you away instead of bring you in and yet we had fought a war of unity can you imagine it it is it is unconscionable that you should fight a war of unity a war to keep nigeria one and indivisible and yet somebody who calls himself a, a, a ruler or leader is dividing the country, pushing people aside, saying this uh, is not qualified or qualified. This is ridiculous. If an Igbo man is being killed today, many people won't won't bat an eyelid. Whereas if it's somebody else, oh, they will start crying out. I was expecting Nigerians to come out and speak against the question of pushing pushing Igbos out of the system. Igbos form the, a part of the tripod in this country. You can't push them away. In fact, Igbos form the largest 
ethnic nationality in Nigeria. And I stand to be corrected. And yet they are being treated as, as commoners, as though they don't exist. Okay, but you see, let me let me just say this. Our people say, oh, oh, you kukari, oh, kukari, oh, So the best thing is to ignore all those things and move on. Okay, but why was it called Iboku? And who made it? Ibo I have already explained it in my book. It was called Iboku from day one. As soon as the the coup took effect in on the 15th of January 1966, BBC came out with a, a pronouncement that five Igbo majors did a coup in Nigeria, trying to seize power. That is why I wrote a book titled, I wrote this book in, in prison, Kirikiri, mm. even though you are not allowed to write, but it doesn't matter. So I wrote it, calling it Nigeria's five majors. But in the text, I explained that it was a wrong nomenclature given by BBC. In other words, I was castigating BBC for the word five, five majors. majors. Because there were more than five. There were, in fact, eight. The thing is, Igbos constituted at that time more than 60% of officer corps of the Nigerian army. So you would expect that most of the people to do a coup against the government should be in the Igbo. It was not an Igbo coup. There are other coups in this country after that. You don't name, you don't name a coup after those in the majority. You should investigate the coup first. Because if anybody did the investigation, you would see that they might call it a Yoruba coup mm. because it was only a Wolowo that was standing to gain from, from that coup. coup. Mm. Only a Wolowo was the political juggernaut that was gained from that coup. The beneficiary of that coup. Yes. And yet they say Igbo coup because it, it suited them to say it's an Igbo affair. Mm. And but that... eventually, because I said I have been to a panel. We've, we've killed that matter. And somebody like Babangida said, ah, oh, we are now better informed. And most importantly, Ademoyega, a Yoruba, wrote a book titled Why We Struck. I recommend this book to all Nigerians. Uh, was he part of the coup? Of course, Ad Major Ademoyega was part of the coup. Good. He was one of the majors. And, and he, a Yoruba? Yes. And he said, he claimed in his book, why we struck i'm saying it emphatically so that anybody can go and buy that book is in the bookshops incidentally he's dead now but the books are there okay why we struck says we are only three that did the, the planning of that coup and he named them himself ademo yega he's from the university of london he read history before joining the army Nzogu from Obanam and Ima Ifajuna, three of them. Mm. Any other thing you hear, and they were to do that coup in 1961. But you see, they kept postponing it, postponing it, postponing it. And they had reasons to postpone these coups. Because if you are going to do a coup against, uh, let's say, A, and A is not in the country, what do you do? Do a coup in the in vacuum? No, 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 it's not done. Okay. Now, you talked about the um, Oputa panel. Yes. And um, before we get to that point, because uh, the uh, Oputa panel was set up during the current dispensation, the democratic dispensation. Under Obasanjo. Under Obasanjo's yes. presidential dispensation. And now, Oputa panel recommended that Igbo should be, they should be apologized to and they should be compensated. Mm. I want to, to stand corrected. And of course, Obasanjo came out openly saying, I, the, my government will not apologize to anybody and we will not pay compensation to anybody. He said it on TV, NTA. So, so now, 
the back that that that's um uh after the war after that genocide war yeah many people the the videos are out there what our people passed through what you experienced the kind of suffering deprivation uh barricade and the land the sea blockade and all that the yes, yes, and yes, all yes. That. now after that war a victor no victim no victor no, no, vi bank, uh, no bank yeah it was declared and they called a uh, program they called um three hours the reconstruction the rehabilitation and the reintegration how did that go how did it go yeah how, how did, it go? did it go sorry yeah. now the point is this even if we cry from here to thy kingdom come if the government of the day doesn't want to do anything they don't do anything we will always be talking while they will be chopping all i can tell you is <laughs> Gawan said they were going to have the three R's Recon rehabilitation, reconstruction, and re whatever it is. What has he done? Hmm. Boko Haram is being fought in the Northeast today, but they have been reconstructing and rehabilitating them. Hmm. Due the amount of money being voted, the one of Biafra that was fought how many years ago? It ended years. in 1970. Hmm. Who has been rehabilitated? Nothing. What has been reconstructed? But you see, Obasanjo has given us a hint as what decisions they took after the war. Hmm. Because Obasanjo was the commander of that Marine Commando. And you know, it was through them that the war ended. Okay? At Owere. So he has given us a hint that they took a decision against Igbo against Ndibo. Yes. So we know. And let me tell you, it's not good to be crying like a baby. It's not. I know that Igbos can take care of themselves. Mm. That's why I, I detest the idea of anybody talking about uh, I want to be president. Why, which, why do you want to be president? Mm. President of what? We should know what is happening, sit down and talk, and decide on the modalities for moving forward. What we should do is not to cause another civil war, but to handle our faith, holding our faith in our own hands. Okay. Simple, and we can do it. And, um, okay, uh, before we get to that, because I'm still going to come to that, now, um, the issue of Biafra have... Re re resurrected. It seems the spirit of those who died during the Biafran War have come back to repossess even the children that never saw the war or had anything about the that war. That is the point. And they are now shouting Biafra, Biafra, Biafra. We want it now, not tomorrow. Yes. Now, um, as a father who has seen it all, who was part of it, will you say that before that coup of the incident before that coup, the coup and the war and after the war, and what is happening today in Nigeria, is there any difference? <laughs> or has it got Things worse? are worse today than before. There is more crisis in Nigeria today than before. If that, in fact, the only thing, the difference is the war itself. Hmm. Uh -uh, there's more crisis. Name any, any ethnic nationality. Ne talk about kidnapping. Talk about headsmen. Talk about... Good Lord. So, I don't know where to start. All right. Sir, so, um, honestly speaking, we have had a whole lot. It's just that we have little time. But we have extracted a lot of information and experience from you. Now, this resurgence of Biafra agitation, and you've, you know, made a very important statement that the Igbos can find their footing. Of course. Now, and they are asking these young people, for the fact that the situation then, the situation now, now is far worse. Yes, much worse. Now, and they are saying that they will want to be separated from Nigeria so that they can find their footing. Separate. And push for their own destiny in their own hands. With what Nigeria had done so far against Ndibo, with the decisions and the conspiracy they've done and modeled, that we make sure that an Igbo man will not flourish within the Nigerian space. Do you think that these young chaps 
this young generation they are correct or they are in right order saying we want to do everything possible to secure our homeland and flourish within our homeland without yes. external forces Excuse me. and interference what i ask the youths to do is to make haste slowly mm. don't rush into anything that you will regret okay. don't rush into anything you will regret before you do anything you must explore the chances you have mm. of success okay i am talking about like some people talking about we want presidency but that that is tall order mm -hmm. why do you want presidency is it your father's property this is rubbish you can make Igbos think in this country you can make Igbos take t-i-c-k in this country by human development mm. if you develop your own family and every other Igbo person does the same thing and we're not doing badly already mm. you will find that you you will be the sign of, uh, of all eyes. That's you are talking there about. There are people now who go to Onisha Market mm -hmm. to go and find. They come from the north to go to Onisha Market to find out what made these people who lost the war take. And that is what people uh, are talking about. Akulono making this place. Exactly. To the okay. We should keep our place tidy. Mm. Tidy your own home. That is put our acts together mm. before we talk about each and those. Huh? Mm, well, I think that is very important because some people are coming up with a campaign that our homeland should be secured. That is good ridiculous. governance, good governance, good development, economic development, um, uh, human capital development, and yes. all that yes. should first of all be integrated into Igbo livelihood, exactly. their culture, and exactly. everything, so that they can. Uh, in other words, we will put our place in order. Okay. Before we think of going outwards all right by the way there's another thing oh. i don't like people ridiculing anybody because you are not part of their ethnic nationality mm -hmm. because we learned lessons from that i won't go beyond what i have just said but mind your language our people should mind the way they talk they are very rude. What they write, I read, and they are usually rude. Why? And their language is, is, is not even polished. So, what is important is that uh, we should look beyond our noses. We should make friends. Mm. We should reach out to other people. Because we're, no man is an island. We should reach out to other people, and not some people who who draw a map of Biafra and include Benue and include uh, even some. I think they have gone as far as northeast. They are crazy, but I don't know whether they are not doing it out of spite. So, let us be human in our approach to human affairs. Because there's another thing I want to see in that respect. The white man says, 10 different things are not necessarily any more different than five different things. Do you want me to explain further? Expatiate? Good. Nigeria is like an octopus. Mm. Many tribes, many ethnic groups, many languages, many. And so it's even probably ungovernable. But Biafra was also in the same, the same problem. Had the same problem. Because we had minorities. Minorities wanted their freedom. The only difference is that in the case of Biafra, every province had its own provincial government. And we had 10 of them. Mm. Provincial governments, so you decide what you want in your area. Mm. Like a confederation system. Like a confederate system. Now, but 
all these things will work if you have a frame of mind to accept other people's ideas too. Compare them with yours and don't rush into decisions. So that what is important is that we should put our own oh, acts together. Right. One is manpower development. Nibo should have it as first priority. Mm. Manpower development. And we are not doing badly. I've said so before. We are not doing badly. Most of the families in Igbo land, most of the families have doctors, lawyers, engineers, and all that. And they are, they are used to developing their own home, which you don't, you don't find in other ethnic groups. That is why we should create a situation in which we are a beacon for the rest of Nigeria. And you know we can be. We can be a beacon for the rest of Nigeria, both women and men. But yeah, every, everybody wants to be, to be this and be that and all that. And our people are rude. We should have some culture okay. of uh, politeness. All right. Thank you so much. It has been a wonderful time with Colonel Ben Boulier. It's a pleasure having him speak with such energy, even at his age. Some of you don't have that <laughs> energy. And I want to tell you that um, I have these wonderful books right here, written by our father, Ben Boulier. It will be made available, uh, it's already available in bookshops, and um, BVI Channel 1 will also try to get copies of this and put it on our online store, where people can also assess them. It's a pleasure to be with you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, are, you. you are a living documentary. <laughs> you are a living, a living book, and we have extracted uh, you know, quite a lot from you, although the time is little, and we know we we'll still have you around. Thank and you. And we will always come over Thank to you. chat with you. Thank you. This is Media Shout with BVI Channel 1. I associate the Peters with <laughs> Colonel Ben Boulier, and um, we are wrapping it up. I know you want us to continue on this program, but time is not on our side. We have other programs that we are, you know, trying to cover today. 30th May, the day we honor our dead. But before I go, before I allow our father to leave, sir, do you have anyone or any people or any tribute you can pay to your comrades who fall side by side through I, during I that. have written a book on them. Let me give you an example, excuse me. Tribute to a comrade. Yeah. A dynamic a dynamic stickler for order. Selfless, never forlorn. A patriot irreplaceable by another. Forthright, inspiring everyone. For Major Zogu, the gallant soldier. Appropriate words I have none. Thank you so much. The person I will really want to talk about now is Major Ademoyega. Mm. Adewale Ademoyega. Mm. He is a great... Oh, he was because he's dead now. He died over three years ago in Lagos. But this is a man who did something and took, and took responsibility for doing it. Where, where everybody were, you know, was saying, it's an Iboku, it's an Iboku. He said, no, it's not an Iboku. And that he was one of the three principal actors. And that he even went to recruit people Mm. For that coup, Ju uh, the January 15 coup. Right, and you know, he even realized how he went to Ibado to recruit one of the majors. The one of the majors happened to have come from Benue, and the man threatened him, threatened Ademoyega. And he will report this matter to the commanding officer. And he said, Abdel Mwaga said, I said, no, 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 you know, I'm joking. I'm, I, when you are getting somebody to, to, to participate in a coup and he says he's going to report, that is a terrible thing. So he said he was joking. Hmm. And the man took him. Interestingly, Abdel Mwaga is dead. He took part in that uh, coup. Uh, the man I am referring to, 
used to be a chief of staff in the Nigerian army. He's dead. He's dead. A lot of people who took part in that coup of January 66 are dead. A lot of them are dead. Mm. All right? So the, when they get to God's own kingdom, they will sort out their problems. <laughs> and I don't mind when I when it will be my turn to join them because I already made a case. I, I will get some lawyers to prepare case, you know, my, my own <laughs> brief for me. It's all right, sir. Now, uh, finally, you fought uh, in the Biafran army. You uh, was, you was, or uh, you were um, uh, part of Nigerian army before the war. Then, yes, yes, then yes, yes. you became yes. a very important part in the Biafran army. Yes. And in Biafra, I became military administrator. Military, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, some men, women fall under your command, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. Uh, oh yes. Now, uh, do you have any words? You know, the, no, no, no. Them? Even okay. This is what I keep telling our people mm. in the Igbo. Most of the people who fought very well for Biafra were not Igbo. Mm. Like Major Archibong. Archibong is not Igbo. Major Archibong. Where do you think he comes from? Either Cross River or Aquaibon. Eh? Aquaibon. Eh, Aquaibon. He was, he was arguably the best soldier we had. Oh, there were others. One of the officers had a gunshot wound to his mouth, and this, the jaw. you know, distorted his jaw, oh. and eventually, he was taken to, uh, he was taken abroad and operated upon, but the marks are still there. All right. I know from that area too. Mm. So, and look at Efion. Efion didn't have, need, needed not be in Biafra at all. Mm. But when he came back, he went first to Lagos, if you have read his book, came back to, to Enugu and met Ojuku, and they teamed up and they started talking. It was he that went and on a, a visit to the to the various uh, units and came back and told Ojuku, I don't know what you are you're up to because I, I haven't seen any arms, I haven't seen any troops, I haven't seen it. And Ojuku said, ah, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Um, I don't expect a war, I'm expecting a, a, a little skirmish. Two or three days, it's all over. We go back to conference table. He was wrong. Oh, thank you so much uh, for refreshing us. And that is where we'll be wrapping it on this media chat with our father, Ben Bullier. Cornell, don't mistake that. It's all right. Don't even have to give. You can even call me mistake. It's okay with me. <laughs> Anything that you is, call me is okay with that me. Is, and his door is wide, wide open for our people and to us. The hospitality is awesome. We really appreciate him. And you that have been watching, thank you for watching. Keep subscribing to our YouTube channel. Keep following our activities. Go to our website, www.bbhnf1, for news update. And on today, we'll continue to inform you and continue to keep you on the know on what is happening as Biafrans all over the world celebrate Biafra Day, 30th May this year. 2020. Thank you very much. Thank I you. want to, first of all, thank you and Enugu. No. For actually taking time to come here, to find me in my little heart here. <laughs> and I am very grateful to you. I wish you will come more often. All right, sir. We'll the only be. thing is that I'm traveling. It's all right, sir. We'll, be. Uh, <laughs> we'll, but, uh, we'll always come around. But you are welcome here. Thank you, sir. You are welcome Thank you, sir. here. Thank you, sir. Um, the thing is, I plead with the young ones, they come, they let them come and meet me or let me be asked to come and meet them yeah. so that we can talk All right. we don't need to cause another civil war one is enough in a lifetime All right. thank you thank, thank you, you. Sir. thank you sir and that is how we are wrapping it up stay connected with bbi channel one and i'll always continue to bring it to you associated peter signing out on this media chat goodbye and god bless you Happy Biafra, remember. Thank day. you.